All right, we're looking at descriptive statistics, making simple tables and graphs to summarize data. And in the last video, we looked at some categorical data, and we made a pie graph and a bar graph. In this video, we're going to look at some quantitative data. Now, I want you to be careful. I just mentioned this because I have had several students and, and several non-students in the past show me graphs that they have made where what they do is simply uh, highlight one variable for a lot of different elements here for example the price in thousands of uh, the minimum price in thousands that you can get each of these models of a car for and in Excel clicking something like insert and column and then ta-da they think that they have made a graph that helps you know something about the data. Now, what is this graph? What is it doing? Well, all it is doing is saying that for the first observation, and we can't even see what the observation is, that it is actually an accurate integra. We can see that from the table. But in this graph, the accurate integra costs $13,000. Great. The second observation costs $28,000. Also, great, but this graph is not descriptive. It's not informative. All it is is a less informative version of the table itself. We can see in the table that this is 13000 and this is 29000 We can actually see it much better than we can see it in the graph. So if you're trying to describe data, you don't want to just graph all of the numbers that you already have unless it actually helps you see some kind of pattern. But that graph that we just made doesn't help us understand anything. You want to do some summarization to the data before you actually graph it. And so what we're going to do is make a frequency distribution, break up one of these numbers into different categories, one of these quantitative variables into different categories, count up how frequently cars appear in each of these ranges of values, and then we can see what patterns emerge from that. So uh, again, I'm going to use this tool of the pivot table. And so if you want to get to a pivot table, you can go to insert pivot table and hit OK. And again, I'm using the classic version of the pivot table. In Excel 2007, there's a fancier version, just really quickly to review. Um, under Options, Display, check Classic Pivot Table Layout. If you don't, you're going to see something that looks more like this. But I, I like the classic pivot table layout. I haven't played with the new version very much. So in the classic pivot table layout, if you have a quantitative variable, suppose horsepower of the cars right here. Uh, just take the horsepower, left click with your mouse and drag it, drop it into row fields here. And what Excel is doing is listing each of the unique values of horsepower that appear in the data set. Now, we don't want to just stick with that. What we want to do is create what we call bins BINS or classes, which are groups of these numbers. For example, we might want to group the data into groups of 10, say uh, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, or 20, 50 to 69, 70 to 89, 90 to 109, etc. And Excel lets you do that pretty easily. If you right click on these numbers over here, and go to group. Excel will ask you, well, how do you want to create these groups or classes? It suggests we start at 55, just because the lowest number is 55. And you could do that. I would suggest instead starting at a, a nice round number, perhaps 50, and ending at 300. Again, that's the highest number in the data set, so it automatically selects that 300 and by 10. Now we could do by 10. However, if we do that, we might have too many 
groups. Let's hit OK and see what happens. Um, we've got 50 to 59, 60 to 69, etc. And uh, one thing to notice here about what Excel has done that is very bad form in statistics, it skips groups that don't have any entries. And so we're going to have to fix that. We also have quite a few groups here. The typical rule of thumb, this isn't a law, but it's a rule of thumb, is that for a frequency distribution of quantitative data, you probably want, most of the time, more than four groups, but less than 20 groups. It just gets to be too busy when you look at that many groups. Now, in certain situations, you might want to go outside these guidelines. So a couple of problems we have to deal with here before we even really make our table is I think groups of 10 is probably too small. We've got too many groups. You know, the, the wider the bin, the wider the range of each group, the fewer groups you're going to have to have. So let's right click group and instead of 10, let's try, let's try groups of 20 and see how that ends up. So then again we're missing some groups because there is no data there are no cars with horsepower between 230 and 249 here it looks like and you don't want to just leave those blank you want to show people that there is no data there so right click and let's go to field settings and layout and print and check this box here show items with no data now, again, you might prefer not to show these lines. I'm just telling you what st statisticians really prefer. And when we graph this, we're going to want to have those uh, spaces as blank spaces so that the eye can see that there are no data points there. So we've got our categories, our bins set up. And we have to do this with quantitative data you didn't have to do this with categorical data because it's already categorized. Now we want to drop data items here so we can take this horsepower and we can drag it over and drop it. Now if we do that normally what's going to happen is that again as I mentioned in the in the other video if you take a quantitative variable and drop it Typically, what Excel wants to do is take those quantitative values and sum them, add them all up. It usually doesn't want to count them. Now, in this case, it is counting them, and I think the reason it's doing that is because I've been working in Excel previously, and I already changed that setting on another worksheet to count rather than add up. Let me show you what you're probably going to get if you do this with a quantitative variable under value uh, field settings sum it likes to add those values up so you always want to check this grand total and make sure that it adds up to the number of items that are in your data set and if you need to right click value field settings and go to count so here we've counted up how many values occur in each of these different ranges so now that we have our frequency distribution, some a uh, couple of additional things that you might want to do. I always like after I make a uh, a pivot table to copy from the bottom right hand corner 93, keep copy everything highlight up to the second row in the table. You don't want the count of HP this top row. You want the second row and you can right click and go copy or hit control C on your keyboard and then go to a new tab and hit control V to paste it. I like to do this because once you paste it these numbers aren't going to change however in the pivot table if you change a setting it's going to change. I like to have a permanent record of this table and then you can edit and change maybe make these uh, titles a little better uh, you might want to, in this case, get rid of the less than 50 category. Uh, I'm not sure why Excel did that, so I'm going to delete that row. That's kind of unnecessary. And the greater than 310, because there aren't any of those. 
you'll also notice that uh, for that blank row Excel just left it blank uh, because there are no um, entries in that category now in this case I'm just going to type in zero by hand I don't like empty spaces in tables you, you want to really tell people that that's zero now once we have this frequency distribution another common thing that people will do is either uh, add another column so we can see the percent frequency or to make what's called a relative frequency. So let's fill in both of these. Um, percent frequency is just the percent of each category of the total. Relative frequency is the proportion. And by proportion I mean a percent before you multiply by a hundred. A percentage written as a decimal. That's what we mean when we say proportion. So to calculate a percent frequency, easiest way is equals and then this number here uh, B2 cell B2 divided by and I'm just going to type 93 there are some fancier ways to do it and then times or star 100 and that will calculate the percentage of each case so we can see 16.12 percent are between 130 and 149 horsepower for example and uh, most people would say we have way too many decimal places here um, so I'm going to reduce the number of decimal places and you can click this little box here this will increase the number of decimal places this will decrease the number of decimal places so let's round it off to two decimal places here is probably good enough and a relative frequency is the same thing equals B2 divided by 100 not by 100 sorry by 93 but you don't multiply it by a hundred and in some contexts it is better to be able to see talk about or use for computations a percentage written as its decimal counterpart or what is the frequency compared to one rather than out of a hundred and that's all a relative frequency is now once you've calculated this you might want to make uh, a graph and the most common graph that statisticians like and we're going to be looking at this kind of graph a lot in this course is a histogram so let me spell that out for you h-i-s-t-o-g-r-a-m a histogram and a histogram is a bar graph with a couple of changes it's what we call a bar graph in statistics when you're dealing with quantitative data and so to make a bar graph we're going to do the same kind of thing we've done before highlight don't highlight the gram total we don't want the total in in the histogram or the bar graph but we're going to start by making a bar graph insert column and we have our basic bar graph now what do we need to do to improve on this and and make it into a histogram a proper histogram is what we we're shooting for first let's click this total legend and hit the delete key that's just taking up space you also want to give it a better title but the key thing to make it a histogram in addition to it being a quantitative variable and having the ranges of the bins along here on the x-axis a histogram does not have bars uh, sorry gaps between the bars so we want to get rid of these spaces because these categories are adjacent there are no spaces between them and so when you're dealing with quantitative data and your bins are adjacent as they should be get rid of those spaces so right click on one of those bars and go to format data series and then an option will come up here series options gap width so the gap width here is what we want to change and just drag that little slider down to no gap and hit close and once you have all those bars uh, together with no gaps in between this is what we'll call a histogram and so let's label it and you probably also want to label your um, x-axis with the word bins or categories and label your y-axis